How are you? I'm dandy. My my week is over. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. I know um I have Cozy Moon podcast and I have She Gets It, but I feel like this topic relates to both. Mm-hmm. So we going to smash them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I say use it where it can be used, where it can help people. Mm-hmm, um, for sure. well, welcome to She Gets It. And yes. I guess. Yes, I am excited, honored. I appreciate the love. Yes. And uh, your content as well. Been listening to you on Apple Podcasts and stuff like that. I've so. been getting you some apps. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> it's all good that's good that's good well welcome sean we have sean hyman all right and he is from it's scary to remarry podcast and he is half of two divorce guys podcast i haven't yes. listened to that one yet i have to listen to that and before we get into today's topic which is the effects of child support and would you date someone who doesn't pay child support? Which is a really good topic that Sean came up with. And I wanted him to pick the topic on purpose. So um, this is going to be juicy and good. Because when it comes to child support, I'm on both sides with it. I understand the aspect from my father's side. And I understand the aspect from my mother's side because I have two kids. So I understand it. And um we're going to talk. We're going to dig in. But before we dig in, I want to dig into you and your shows and your why and all of that. So tell these people about um, your shows and yourself and let's just get in. Yes, I am. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am Sean Heineman. Uh, I am just a, a sinner saved by grace. Uh, hmm. And then on top of that, I um, that, cause that's not what I do is who I, who I am. Yes. Um, I, I am a husband. I am a father, uh, author of four books, podcaster, um, been through a divorce, um, remarried, interesting story, story with that. Met my wife on Instagram, slid in the DM whole thing. That's another Ooh. topic for another day. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, and then I'm also the the host of a Scary to Remarry podcast and also on YouTube. And I came up with the title because a lot of people ask me, I, I got it based on what I went through when I went through a divorce and then going into remarriage. Because sometimes mm-hmm. when you're about to remarry, you ask yourself, like, do I really have what it takes to remarry? Or I know what it's like to go through a divorce. Like you, you have all these questions, just being right. transparent and honest with yourself. And plus it rhymes. So I figure that's that's the name of the podcast. And I also have two divorce guys, uh, which is just in a pilot. It's just 10 episodes. We want to see how that's going to work with my co-host, uh, Vince. Shout out to Vince. And we, um, we're we basically with two divorce guys who remarried. And we mm-hmm. talk about the things that we've been through and what uh, remarriage look like for men and the issues that we deal with as well. Pause. Let me tell you how... The world is small and the podcasting world is small because here I am stumbling upon Sean. And I'm just like, you know what? <clears throat> but we got to do an episode, but there's um, some pod fam that I want to connect you with. Divorce is fuck podcast. I want you to connect with them. He, he was like, oh, I, I know them. I already did the episode. I was like, wait a minute. So <laughs> this is why it's so important for podcasters to talk, to DM to dapple into because you never know who knows who and who already did a show and I just felt like you know um with Jay it's like the other side and for him it's like the man side and I thought they would be perfect together and they already did a show I said okay okay we're working we're working so I knew I said oh I got the right one I said, okay. oh yeah Shout out to the queens over there. I appreciate them. They keep it so 100. I'm always listening to their podcast yeah. as well. So I'm, I'm grateful they gave me the opportunity to jump on their platform and uh, talk about my life experiences. Love it. I love it. All right, y'all. Um, what made you say, okay, these are my experiences. 
I feel comfortable enough to share it with other people um, despite what they might think or what they might say or, you know, how I might come off to people who may not have seen me in this perspective. Mm. Well, I think, first of all, we have a lot of relationship coaches out here. They're in abundance. You can find them everywhere. Um, I figure you have to know your lane, like where Mm -hmm. you operate. And for me, it took me a divorce, going through a divorce uh, after 14 years. And from a man, yeah, right, 14 years. Um, So coming from a man's perspective, I'm looking at it like I can only imagine how many other men have been divorced, Mm -hmm. but don't have a voice. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is this got to be my lane because all the stuff that I went through going through a divorce, Mm there's so many other guys that probably... want to express themselves but it's coming out in different ways maybe unhealthy ways Mm -hmm. so but it's scary to remarry i'm like i gotta help some brothers i gotta be transparent because i think that's what we're missing on social media is honesty and transparency because everybody looks uh everybody has their highlight reels on uh, instagram and all this other stuff so i'm like yeah right where's the real stuff at yeah (laughs) love it um what do you want listeners to get from your shows? I just want them to see a man that's broken, that's been healed. Mm. Like we have to be honest with ourselves because when the mic is off, mm-hmm. when you turn off the phone, all those things, there you are. You, okay. you're, you're with yourself. So if I can help somebody, because one of my taglines is I help people do the messy work by doing by doing the work inside out. Let's do the messy work first. Mm-hmm. So come to my channel and you can see a, a, a grown, transparent man. Plus, I'm at an age now where I don't care what people think about me. I'm past that stage, right? I love I'm, it. I'm... <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm I'm 44 years old right now. Because I don't care what people got to say. I mean, I like, got to. Don't crack. I gotta... <laughs> yeah, right? I got a a smoking hot wife. I got healthy kids. Hello. We got a roof over our head, protection. We good. So I don't care what anybody say about me. But if I can help one person, then I've done my job. I love it. Um, What I really like about your episodes is you sort of like me. Like there's no, let's talk trends. Let's talk latest news. Let's talk Mm -hmm. um, gossip. This is the topic. This is what I'm talking to, about today. And I'm going to give you three points and we're going to get out of here and we're going to handle our business. So I said, you know what? I ain't never been married, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm listening. Oh, he got another episode. Okay, we're going to push play because he going to go bam, bam, bam. See y'all next time. This is where to reach me. Boom. And I said, okay, this is what I like because a lot of people um, might listen to one of my episodes on She Gets It. And it might be 10 minutes, mm-hmm. 10 minutes that you needed on this topic. And then I just release you. My longest episodes are usually the ones with people because I want mm-hmm. to give them a deeper insight on who this person is and why I picked them to talk to. So mm-hmm. I love your approach when you do your shows. It's really good. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And that's that's what I appreciate about your show. Your show is so real. Yeah, it's it's almost like we just sitting on the couch, just kicking it. Right. You know, and I'm fluff. like, that's what's up. I, I like that. Yes, I don't like fluff. All right, tell these people where to find your show so we can dig into this topic. <laughs> yes, I can be found um, on. You can find me on YouTube. Just search "It's Scary to Remarry." You'll find me there. And uh, you can also find me on any podcast platform. You can find me on Spotify. You can find me on Apple Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcast, you can find me there. Just type in, it's scary to remarry. I'll pop up first. Yes. And on IG, he has some good reels, some quick videos, just to give you a little snippet, a little taste. And don't forget to um, put him in on that search on YouTube and watch them things and subscribe. All right. So... This topic that you place upon me, the effects of child support and um, the ultimate question, would you date someone who doesn't pay child support? Let's go. Ooh. Why this? Let me, for- <laughs> let me let me ask you that. What, what, is, what is your perspective? Okay, so 
All right. Um, I think child support is an unfortunate system um, because no one should have to tell a mother or father to financially prepare and provide for your child, right? That should be something you want to do better than your parents did it, okay? It should be something innate, but some people are just like, I'm not ready or I don't want to, I don't understand why it has to be this, all this little petty stuff where that shouldn't even be a conversation. And I think um, fathers and mothers shouldn't have to be told by anyone or the government to take care of their children that they created. And um, unfortunately, there are some women that can give birth to a child, but don't feel like mothers and that falls on fathers. And there's a lot of great fathers that take the role of a mother and father and they provide for a child, but they can't be a mother. And fathers do not have that personality to be like, oh, um, their mom ain't this and they don't do this and they haven't come to see this and they just want to, you know, fly and be out and about with their boyfriends and they haven't seen their kid in like 10 years. But it's real. It does happen. And the hardworking fathers that keep their heads down, provide for their child, make sure they have, they don't speak because it's not within them to speak. So people have this assumption that that does not happen. There are fathers out here who are single fathers who are doing everything for themselves. And they also, in some states, get put on child support. And that mother gets the money, but she does not have the child. And he has the child 100% of the time. Or family members of his have the child 100% of the time. So that's the thing that doesn't get talked about. But I think the negativity of it is... <sighs> The government is getting a piece of the fact that you gave birth to a child because once you give birth to a child, you sign on the line, you have a birth certificate, you have a social security number, which is a quote unquote account number for the US. Um, the state starts receiving money because you had a kid, okay? And you start accumulating tax credits because you have a kid. And you then have a situation where you have to have the courts involved for whatever reason you feel and they get a percentage or a certain amount of every time someone pays child support it's never the full 100 percent that that child is going to get or you're going to get in your account some states i feel like don't really give an amount that matters some states go overboard with it like california florida new york right and that shouldn't be. And I always have this um, thing where I hate state laws because I feel like it's a way for people to dodge and weave responsibility. It should be just federal law. This is what it is all over. So everybody can show some accountability for the choices that they make. And people can get selfish. People can be vindictive. People can abuse. Um, child support just to hurt the other parent or put them in a position where they, you know, one stumble can be 10 falls, right? And in order to make um, sure the bare minimum, the bare minimum needs are met for that child, you know, the state is involved in child support is to set, set in place the differences between both parents. So logically, it's supposed to be 50-50, where depending on what this mother makes, depending on what this father makes, this is what should be paid. Who has a child the most? Some states, um, child support and visitation is, some states is not. For instance, Georgia is not. That's a separate thing. You want visitation? That's another uh, legal thing you got to do. And you're going to pay extra money to do something basic that that parent should want, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, I have two kids and I never wanted either one of my kids' fathers to be on child support, but one tried to leverage um, our relationship and not doing for the kid um, because they felt like it was a package deal. Can I get that number two value meal that comes with the, uh, the child and the mom, please. Yeah, I want that loyalty member lifetime discount. There is that. There is none of that. But 
that is why I was like, you know what? Let me take me completely out of it. And now I don't have to have a back and forth with you. I don't have to have an argument. It's just going to be this. I'll take the bare minimum and deal with all of this because you want to do all of that. Because I'm very like drama free. My house mm-hmm. is very peaceful. You know what I'm saying? As long mm-hmm. as the uh, the um, iPads are charged. Yeah. And um, <laughs> that's how I want it. And then I have my oldest. She's seven. And I gave her dad time. I gave him the whole time I was pregnant. Uh, three months after. And I was like, okay. I, I see my mom struggle um, being within a marriage and living like a single parent. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, she let my dad skate until, till I was like 15. Mm-hmm. My dad owned businesses, properties. He had his own business. Whenever he wanted to get up and travel, that's what he did. Um, and she never asked him for anything. She was like, I'm going to just keep my head down. I'm going to struggle. I'm going to go through women's shelters. I'm going to uh, be on section A. I'm going to do, I'm going to grind it out and I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to ask him for anything. I feel like her life would have been much more easier if she at least let him do the bare minimum that he should have done. So when I was like um, 16, he, I remember him taking me to like the social security office and he was like, yeah, I want her to get some of my social security until she's 18. So Mm -hmm. from 16 to 18 was the only times he financially provided for me. Mm-hmm. and um, I felt like an obligation. I didn't feel like he wanted to, and I don't think any child f- should feel like that. Um, I never felt like the the want to do it was genuine, so when it comes to um, my kids, I was like, okay, I felt like I gave him ample time. He's not disabled. He's not dumb. He's choosing to not finish school because he was in college. He's choosing to not work like everybody else around him works. And I'm just like, I'm not going to allow you to pop up and do whatever you want to do and not provide. So um, I did file the paperwork, but he took it upon himself to go there. And he went to court and the judge was like, okay, this is how the process works. You know, you're going to do the paternity test. He's like, no, you're not doing no paternity. I know she's mine. Just tell me the amount. Mm. So they told him the amount. The amount was two sixty three a month. When you break that down and you have a four month old, that is nothing. That is yeah. nothing. I I can spend that in a week. That is nothing. So depending on the state, it does it, it puts a dent in nothing. It's like you might as well not even go. But I wanted my daughter to grow up and, and, and see that I did everything that I could to make sure you were taken care of from my side. I even did this so I could make sure you were taken care of. So he said he would agree to do it. Mm-hmm. And she's been four months up until now. He has never paid. Wow. Now, is it in the 20 K's? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, do they still have some sort of relationship? You could call it that. When he um, comes to visit from out of state, I do allow him to stay here. Um, Mm -hmm. I can only do a maximum of three days because it's very hard for me. Um, I just feel like the people around him enable him to grow. I feel like he's scared of who he will become being a full adult. So he likes to be around people who doesn't, who don't talk about the elephant in the room. And what he needs to do. And it's very frustrating to me because that tells me that you don't, you still don't know who your friends are. Because if your friends can be around you and they can take care of their kids, they provide for their kids and they work. And they, when they go on vacation and you go with them, they travel with their kids and their wives. And your kids are scattered and you're not consistently providing. And you are not a figure in their life where they'd be like, oh, I didn't call my dad today or my dad didn't talk to me today. And you're like, you know, it's late, but I, you know, I just want to talk to him. That's not in you yet. I don't know when that's going to be in him and I can't force him to be that, but it is up to me to 
give my seven-year-old and him the space to have whatever relationship he puts the effort in having. And I'm very honest with her. I do not talk bad about him in front of her. I'm just like, you know what? Your dad is still trying to figure out what it is to be who he needs to be. And I can't force him to do that. And for her, it's kind of weird because I don't feel like she looks at him that way because he's not mature. But my youngest daughter's dad has been there around her since she was a baby. So she always looked at him in the fatherly role. And so now that she's older, she sees the differences. Mm -hmm. So um, for my three month old, it was the whole value meal that he was trying to get. And I was like, "Mm -mm, I'm not doing that. So, but he's always been a great father. Um, even when I met him when I was like 18, he's always been a great father. That's never been a thing. He's just really bad with relationships with adults. So, um, but I just, the only reason why I pulled child support in there is because I didn't want that drama that came with it. I just wanted to, boom, you did the bare minimum. And even though he does pay his child support, he mm-hmm. does more. Like he'll do more, even sometimes for both of them. Um, they have a relationship. He's very great, you know, with his other children, our child, um, my seven-year-old, and it's cool. It's it's respected now, but it didn't it didn't start like that. So I feel like sometimes child support is needed, depending on the situation. But most of the times, I feel like today it's a money thing. It's like, ooh, I got him, or um, ooh, I'm gonna get a baby. I'm a, I'm gonna be, you know lit for the rest of my life I don't want to work because I'm used to this lifestyle no ma'am that is that man's lifestyle you just happen to have a baby with them you need to figure out what you want to do and some states take it as okay we see through the situation and some states like okay on paper it says this you make this I think you should be paying this and it's kind of like you know no child needs 50k a month no child needs 30K a month. Like, let's be serious here. And I just think is it can be seen as a joke. Honestly, I would rather not have involved any other entity into taking care of my child, but because I was put in a position where I wanted to make sure my child didn't see me ever have to struggle and not do everything I could possibly do to uh, help the situation. I had to do, I felt like I had to do what I had to do. But if the pride and the ego wasn't there, mm-hmm. who is the government? And then and, and that's how it would be. But you know, sometimes people don't know how to act. Not ACT, but A-C-K. So. <laughs> no, that's real. No, yeah. no, I, I totally get it. Uh, I think because from a man's perspective sometimes and i'm just speaking on you know the way men think at least some guys yeah i think if 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 you if the mother and the father relationship isn't good Mm -hmm. and sometimes he'll throw out the baby with the bath water Mm -hmm. you know and then you as a woman you are forced to make sure that all right you know what well in order to protect us me and my child yeah. Let me just at least put him on child support because to me, I guess because look, I was on child support, mm-hmm. like I was paying child support and alimony, mm-hmm. you know, ain't like I was rich, but yeah. I was paying both, you know, after going through a divorce and separating and starting all over on top of that, having to pay child support and alimony, like that can be a struggle mm-hmm. um, starting all over again. But when you, it's like when you when your child like you said, I like what you said about um, protecting your child, knowing that you took the initiative to mm-hmm. put them on child support. I think that is important because your child needs to know that they are protected. Mm-hmm. I think they need to know that on top of, you know, mommy and daddy not being together, like they yeah. want to have some kind of value. And I'm saying that it's a dollar amount, but it's like, no, I was proactive in making sure that you were good. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, it's it's one of those things where unfortunately, um, some a lot of guys they take it personal, mm-hmm. and they shouldn't. But because 
the way I look at child support now is if you was married to somebody or, you know, you all you decided to be grown enough to lay down together, you should be grown enough to take care of your responsibility. Yeah. That's, that's bottom line, you know, whether if it was a one night stand or whatever, like you still have to be responsible for what you chose to do. And, um, I think just too many guys take it personal and then they try to use the child as, um, you know, use them against the mom and vice versa. And then the child end up being hurt the most Listen. at the end of the day. Right? right. So, and a lot of times we don't think about a child. We just trying to get back at each other because we so upset about, you know, what happened. Mm-hmm. And the child is just like, I'm here now. Can somebody help me please? Mm-hmm. You know, Help me please. <laughs> <laughs> it's um it's just one of those things where don't make me do this I don't want to do this mm-hmm. okay now we're here and 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 unfortunately that's where, where it was at but as far as like their relationships especially because they're girls and I'm not saying girls need that as more than boys do but <sighs> um I could definitely say my youngest child is a daddy's girl okay mm-hmm. I knew she was gonna be that before I had her, I'm just like, okay, she about to be a terrorist. And then this is going to be, and, um, that's who she is. But at the same time, I, I I knew him taking care of her was never going to be a problem, but I think our relationship on how it was going to work as parents versus how we would work in a relationship was going to be new for him because, He's used to having all access to his other child's mother. And then with me, there's boundaries. And he was like completely against that at the beginning. Now it's kind of like, okay, we have an understanding. Um, And my thing is like, I just want them to have a good relationship. I don't want to get in the way of them having a relationship because I remember um, growing up in the house, my, my parents were married. And when my mom left, I was eight and then I just solely lived with her and I could count on one hand the amount of times that I visited my dad up until he passed when I was 18 I was in college and I never went to the funeral because in my mind I allowed him to kind of like the idea of him dying off when I was 15 so I was over it Mm -hmm. and um I remember visiting him before that and I was in the house with him for weeks. I would never call him dad. I would never um, kind of like give him a title in the house. It's kind of like whatever I wanted, I would just ask. Mm-hmm. And I remember constantly thinking every time I spoke, how am I going to ask this without having to say that word? Mm-hmm. Because it never, it never felt real because the feeling was never real of you actually want to father me. You actually um, care about me beyond I did this, I did that, I did that check, you know? And I'm just like, I'm here because if I don't, if I'm not here, it looks like I don't want to be here. Really. I don't want to be here because I see through him already. Mm -hmm. I already, I'm over that, but I'm going to be here to help his ego to make him feel like I did spend time with her. She spent the whole week and it shouldn't have to be that. And the government doesn't care about fathers being in people's lives. The government doesn't care about mothers being in people's lives because unless you establish full custody in court on paper, your child belongs to the state. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that. So it's very important for you to know your state laws. It's very important for you to know your rights as fathers because I know sometimes women can be vindictive. I know sometimes women can be like, well, if you're not giving me this, you're not seeing such and such and you're only hurting the child. And to me, I wish more fathers um, were excited about saving up enough money to pay for whatever lawyer or or representative to represent them in the courtroom to fight for their rights with their child. Just how they be excited for shoe drops, um, games coming out. You got the tickets for such and such. 
you know, we about to do, be excited for I got enough money to represent this so I can be consistently my child's life. She want to take me to court? Forget that. I'm going to show up first. I'm going to take off to be there as long as I need to show up first. Because the reality is the court system is set up to benefit women most time because mm -hmm. women are the ones that be like, oh, I want more money. I'm taking off all of Wednesday. I'm going to use mm -hmm. all the PTO I have left to be there. And dad's be like, man, I got to work. I got to do this. Work is going to be there. But your child being seven is not going to be there more than a year. Your, your child's 10th birthday is not going to be there. And you can't say, oh, I'm going to just wait until they 16 and they 18 and they could call me and they could do this. It is not up for your child to call you. Your child didn't have you. You had your child. Right. Yeah. And I remember my dad having that attitude also. And he was like, the phone works two ways. Phone does work two ways. But how many times am I going to be the one to call to start the conversation and you not giving me anything? I'm pulling from you. Right. And um, you, you just don't want to do that. And one of my brothers is dealing with um, one of his kids' mothers where she was like, okay. I know you're the father. Um, I don't want you to be in her life. I don't want you to be anywhere apart. They're in the same state. Mm. And he the only way he sees her is from Facebook. Mm. And they look just alike. And what's mm. so crazy is they he has a daughter that's three months older than her, but in the mm. same year. So you're constantly looking at the daughter that in your house living in your house and you know that you have another piece of you outside the house that does not know you but mm. you can view her and I told him I said every time you think of her write a letter and put it in the box do something for her and put it in the box every birthday make a card put it in the box because one day she is going to come find you and one day she is going to want to know why you didn't fight for her why you didn't come through why you didn't do this and I'm not saying that He's wrong for not doing it, but children want your effort more than they want your money. Mm. Children want your time more than they want your money. And some people think that's not true because society has kids not wanting to be kids. They want to be grown. I want an iPhone. I want this and that. But especially for girls, they want to know who they are and they can't know who they are unless they know both sides of their parents. So um, hopefully he took my advice and did it, but I think it's super important to sh have something to show when your kids are grown enough to come find you. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, and I think too, let's let's look at this from a deeper level because I, I like when you talk about the government and the court system because it's important to know those things. Mm -hmm. But let's even talk about it on a deeper level with who you even connected with. Yeah. You know, because a lot of guys are ill-equipped to... to they are emotionally bankrupt you know it's it's and it's no judgment you know what i'm saying we all mm -hmm. grown i get it, you know because a lot of times people be like just wear protection yeah i get it but once you feel like you're committed to this person or you feel safe with this person mm -hmm. god don't come off right you know and next thing you know you're pregnant and now he he's ill-equipped mentally mm -hmm. but he, he you know he can't help like he can't help he can't do anything that's going to really help benefit you and this child because he got his own issues going on he isn't emotionally available for the child so here it is you're stuck yeah with the child for most of the part as mom which puts a whole new pressure on you mm -hmm. because not all guys are immature but a lot of guys they just when it comes to kids you know especially if they aren't married they have a tendency to freak out they don't know what to do. First thing they do is run. But can you blame them though? Look at society. When it comes to little kids, especially boys, I don't want my son playing with no dolls. Don't be playing with that. That's girly stuff. Okay. So if I spent all of my years as a boy not seeing a doll, not playing with a doll, I don't have a sister. I don't even go down the the, the girl aisle in the store when I get toys. Um, 11, 12, 13, 14. I see girls in class. I think I kind of like her, but I don't know what that is. And, you know, my dad ain't around, so he ain't talking to me about sex. And my mom want to avoid it like it's a plague. And then I get to a point where my body is changing. 
and all of my friends is encouraging me to do something with a girl and I don't know what that is right and the first time I see girl parts is either on the internet because they have all that access now or if some girl is out and about and she doesn't value herself that's around their age they that's the first time so you're really introducing children in a um, responsible sense to men too late Mm. too late so that's why they're like that Mm. yeah there's and this is why dads are are so important um i have three i have three boys like with us we got we got a big family Mm -hmm. i have 17 year old daughter Mm. and we have a blended family so my wife have a six-year-old son so we're all and then we have two together i love it so i'm just like oh so i'm I'm like i'm done with kids i'm like the doctor (laughs) said i was good the doctor said i'm okay i can't have any more kids i said okay that's all i needed to hear i'm good i'm not trying to have no more kids i'm already in my 40s but anyway yeah um i have full custody of my daughter Mm -hmm. and it's one of those things where when I went through my separation, she was around maybe like 14. And there was a gap in between because I relocated. So then I was only able to get her during like summers and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. there was a period where I didn't have full access to her when she was just with her mom. But these past two years with her going into graduation, she's been with me full time for these past two years. Mm-hmm. So she's able, so when she is older, she can't say, you know, well, dad wasn't there. That No, yeah, dad remarried. <laughs> yeah, dad remarried, but at the same time, I was there for her. She was able to see, you know, a healthy relationship and things of that nature because uh, dads just aren't important. And I think a lot of guys don't feel like they are important. Mm-hmm. So it's easy for them to jump ship because they like, well, you don't need me anyway. And it's easy for them. Now, now the problem happens is when now you end up start having babies all over the place. And Hello. then unfortunately, Hello. yeah, right. And then unfortunately, this is how poverty gets set into place because now you got money coming out to different households, three different households and stuff like that. So when you start hitting the man in his pockets, then you end up losing him emotionally. Mm-hmm. But to the responsible man who's able to know what he's done he and he have to be responsible for that he's like you know what let me just play my part as dad and what i'm supposed to do don't be mad at nobody be mad at yourself (laughs) you know just be responsible and i think sometimes and don't get me wrong because we do have good dads out here i don't want to you know we do they don't get enough light. they don't get enough yeah they don't get enough light and i think we should we need to highlight them um more often but going through a divorce and then trying to get custody of your child, that can really be challenging. Um, and that's why I, I decided to create the YouTube channel. I just want men to be able to be in touch with their emotions. I ain't saying that you got to be soft and weak and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but it's okay to express how you truly feel. And then if that's the case, what can we do from there to make the necessary changes? Right. And I know it was hard for you with your your daughter being that age and not seeing her for so long and you you get to see a change every time you see her because yeah. i know how it is to be a girl around 14 15 16 and your body is i'm just like what is happening and then um it's just it's just a thing that i don't feel should happen like even with like going to and from court with the child support thing i still wanted him to pick her up whenever you want to um you know spend time with her whatever I, I don't want you you being a dad to stop but I want some sort of um, structure on financially what's going to take place responsibility wise what's going to take place and I think a lot of men have this illusion that once the relationship stops my fathering stops once um you know if it's a girl she's supposed to be with her mom she all right did you take on her today no She all right. She with her mom. Mm -mm. You need balance. Both kids need both parents, right? And Mm -hmm. when kids have both parents, they're more at ease. They're balanced. They don't feel like they need to over assert themselves. They're comfortable. They know who they are. And that's why it's it's super important. 
I'm sorry. Can you hold yeah. on for one second? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey moms, are you looking for something stylish to put on, some good accessories, and some must-haves for women? Things that make sense that snatch us in the right way. Okay, look no more. Chris has you set up, okay? Check out shopicon.com. S-H-O-P-I-C-C-O-N.com. Chris is a mom doing it in her own way, okay? She's giving moms like me momentum to go ahead and do our thing all right i look up to her i love her she's very funny check out her podcast is it tuesday okay really real really good you can find her and her products on the site she has shoes intimate gear and new arrivals and more she even has some vintage like items on what's upon a time okay has some great pieces and they do go fast so pay attention and make sure you know when she's about to do a drop, okay? My favorite items that she has that I'm always reading up on is definitely those satin line caps, okay? Because when the hair is done and the hair is moisturized, you can get the things done. So please check her out and follow her on IG at shop.icon. Peace! Here we go. Back to the show. Back to the show. Yeah, like it's. it's it, I think it's super important that dads know, like, just because we dealing with this thing, your child thing don't stop. Like, I still want y'all to have a relationship, and you know, even with my oldest, um, her dad, it just, he just don't get it. You could talk to him till you like purple in the face, and you like, uh huh, I know. Next week, same thing, you know? And um, let's say he doesn't call or anything for like weeks. When he calls, he's calling my phone. When he FaceTime, he FaceTime me. I'm just like, sir, she got a whole four hundred and something dollar iPad in the room that you purchased. Why isn't it that you wake up every morning, you thank God that you have life, you wash your face, you brush your teeth, and before you do any moves for the day, you calling your daughter, that's in Georgia, you calling your daughter that's in Philly, and you calling whoever watching your son. And you acknowledge the fact that I have three kids. Why isn't that like your priority routine? And he still doesn't get that yet. And it's hard for me to respect any man mm -hmm. that doesn't take care of the, the main people that's always going to be permanent. And the main people that will always be permanent in your life when you become a parent are your children. Because when you die, you still was a father, you still was a mom. When, when you um, move from here to the other side of this earth, you still a parent. And so those are the people that's supposed to take care of you when you start losing your memory and losing your ability. And um, perfect example of that is my dad. My dad um, passed away by himself in his big house in Philly because of his ego and his pride. And even when people offered to help him, he was like, no. And um, he lost all ability to take care of himself. And when it comes to avoiding child support, I made me a handy dandy list that should help some people. And the first thing, along with what you said earlier, is you need to vet people and their personalities and their goals better. Because can you, can you say that again for the people in the back? <laughs> you need to vet people and their personalities and their goals better. Because people who have plans that have goals that are in motion, that are in action, they think about everything that they do. So they're not just gonna shoot up the club because I had a night. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, wait, they're gonna hit you with the whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. Do you have this? What you got going on? When was the last time you had your cycle? Uh, this ain't mashing up. You kind of moody. Like they, they know everything that's going on and they are very particular about who they're into. Not just mentally, not just emotionally, but physically, right? Because once you make a life, you make a life. And we can have arguments all day on should men have a say on abortion? Should women be able to do this with their bodies? Should this, 
that's a whole nother thing. And we will never agree because men cannot do what women can do with their bodies. But right. the ultimate thing is your decision making on do you want to be a father or not starts with your your mind as a man mm -hmm. and the choices you make. That is all you have. Because once that seed is within her, she is making the decisions. Mm -hmm. Whether she values you enough to make the decisions with you, that's up to her. But when you don't have no ties, y'all goals are not the same. Y'all are not in unison. Y'all are not a partnership. Y'all are not a unit. She doesn't owe you anything. That's right. And, and can I say something to that? Can I yeah. say something to that? I, I, Cause as I hear you talk out, there's so many things that come to mind. Um, you talk about goals and things of that nature. I was doing some homework the other day mm -hmm. and statistically most women with college degrees have children later because uh... <laughs> yeah, right. They're, they're, they're more focused. And like you said, being intentional, right? Yeah. Really understanding, okay, this is what I need to, I need to focus on me. I can't afford to get caught up right now, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of people are very intentional and I, I think that's important because even with my child, like she's 17, but I'm like, you shouldn't be dating. You should be focused on school, what college you plan on going to. Uh, even and, and even with my boys, I got three boys, right? Because a lot of times we play, and I'm not trying to get off topic, but I was trying to make a point. Because a lot of times people think that we should teach our boys different than girls. Like, you know, it teach should be the same. That's why sales. I wanted boys, but the Lord was laughing at me. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like we have these girls and then we teach them value their body, value your body. Don't let anybody touch you. Your body's a temple, all these things. But then we tell our boys to go and sow the royal oats and try to find yeah, themselves, right? Boozy. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, here's my thing. I have three boys and I'm like, look, I need you to chase purpose, not panties. I need you to focus on you. Let's focus on you. Because as they get older, no, you're not having no girlfriend. You need to focus on what you need to focus on. You know, I need you to be, um, learn how to be a provider before you need, before you learn to be a lover. And that's not so much of being a provider just financially, but can you provide emotionally? Can you provide uh, uh, physically, spiritually, you know, all these different other areas in life? Because we look at providing just as, finances but there's other areas in a man's life that he should be able to provide for those who he's been entrusted with mm -hmm. i agree mm -hmm. i agree um my thing is this <laughs> if you don't plan for your life life is gonna plan for you and uh i have five older brothers um i have one sister from my dad's side um previous marriage and she's around my mom's age so I don't look at it the same um but what my brothers did is they showed me they showed me that this is how men think this is how boys think I was like oh I'm about to be picky with my poly pocket you know what I'm saying so <laughs> I kept I kept myself like in the tomboy-ish mode mm -hmm. so I can get knowledge, okay? Um, and that helped me so much because I can honestly say I when I made my kids, I purposely made my kids. And I took into effect that the outcome of a child can be possible. Am I willing to carry that? Mm. Am I willing to carry that? Mm. At the time, the answer was yes. Did I know that meant lockdown and what freedom? No, but I felt like um, having a mother that was always sickly. And the first time I, um, I had my child, I based the decision on the fact that my grandfather had just passed. A relationship that I wanted to bloom into something great ended. Um, and I'm just like, am I really about to invest three more years into another human being and learn them to possibly not grow? And I was like, no. And and I I looked at life um, in a way where 
all my older brothers have kids. Some of them have multiples. And I was the last one and I didn't have any kids. Mm. My mom is a great grandmother. She was a great mother. And um, I was like, I don't want her to get sick, possibly get a fourth stroke and not be able to handle it and not experience, at least one of my children experiencing her as, as a grandmother. And that was the basis of my decision. So I always say I had my oldest daughter for my mother, not for me. I don't regret it, but could I have waited longer? Heck yeah. Um, but I always said if I had the second one the first time, we we would only have one child out here on earth. That would be my deposit for earth. And that's it because they're complete opposites. But I ended up having um, two girls. I love them. They get on my nerves. <sighs> Welcome to the club. I understand. And um, I'm done. I'm done. I'm 33. I'm done. I've only had five relationships. I've learned plenty of lessons. And well, can I ask you this question then? Can I ask you something real quick? Yeah. Do you plan on marrying one day? I don't know about that because I don't like I don't like people in my space because I've always had people in the house. Oh, okay. You know, so my if I do marry, it's gonna be very unconventional. It's gonna be very well. I saw you two days this week. I see you next week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's gonna be very weird. He's gonna be um someone that's very extremely busy i'm not looking to see someone every day i'm not looking to come home to the same person every day um not saying i want multiple people but i just that whole idea of routine mm -hmm. is sickening <laughs> like i don't i don't know if that's going to be for me but um i do believe in healthy relationships when it comes to my kids that's mm -hmm. friendships that's people who are in relationships around my kids, um, including like if their dads are in relationships, if that's not healthy over there, let's keep over here for another week, you know, mm -hmm. because I think that's very important for children to see healthy relationships mm -hmm. being consistent and not unhealthy relationships being consistent. So even like last year, my oldest, she asked me, she was like, how come you don't live here with like one of our dads or a guy and I'm just like well sometimes the person you have a kid with y'all y'all don't work good in relationships and y'all need to be separate and people have to understand that you can be two healthy parents living separately in separate homes it is possible it does take more work and consistency and boundaries but it is possible and then we need to stop acting like well you have those problems and you're a single mom because you didn't have the relationship court get married and then have the kids because the reality is there's a lot of women who are in marriage hey there people hope you're enjoying the show don't forget to check out cozy womb shop okay the link is in the bio you can also reach the shop at www.whoisshan.com on cozy womb shop my thing that i'm going for right now in the t-shirts is good colors good fun colors for the kids, for mom, for dad, unisex, and some new masks and some new colors. And I'm, I'm focusing on spreading love and getting love, okay? So on there, find what you're into. I have stickers, I have hoodies, and I have mugs, okay? But we got to get into this new season of Cozy Moon Podcast while you enjoy your merch. Let's go. is living life like single mothers still yeah and there are a lot of marriages that are there that are toxic that you could cut with a knife with that tension and you're teaching your child to accept this and it shouldn't be a thing yeah i like marriage doesn't equal perfection this is absolutely going to work and we have to stop telling women this your life is not working because you didn't do this Right. And um, the thing is today, your your life is not working because you saw red flags, you skipped over them, you focused on um, potential and 
you wanted the image of what you wanted your life to be with the wrong person. Marriage right? isn't for everyone. Hello? It's not. Yeah, it's not, nothing's wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? No, I, it's not for everyone. So I, I tell people marriage, it's, it's just not. I mean, shoot, I went through a divorce. I, it's not for everybody. I don't know. Teach his own, though. I just, you know what? I, if, I, if I wake up and I'm like 63, I'm just like, you know what? I want to get married. Listen, maybe, maybe my husband at the time just wants the gum down. And now my all my teeth are gone and I'm ready for the gum down. And that's what I can do for you. Great. You know, the kids is out the way. We can travel when we want to. And, and that's it. But I think waiting later to have kids is smart. And your 20s should be for um, trial and error. Your 30s should be for a great filter and planning. And your 40s is experiencing and being honest about what you don't want and what you're not dealing with. And a lot of people do it too late, right? And so it's just, it's just easier to have this set up when you can set it up. And the um, second thing on my list to avoid child support is take your time before you have kids. <laughs> take your time. Like um, people always say, you know what? The woman's um, reproductive system and all this, the reality is, is women are healthy of all ethnicities having babies in their 40s. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's this illusion that this is what society says. This is the time they supposed to, I'm supposed to have it. Where's my baby, right? Mm -hmm. And my mom had me at 30 or 31. And my father was 60 when he made me. Okay. So for men, it is never not possible. Okay. And for women, if you take care of your bodies and not poison it with a whole bunch of alcohol and not do a whole bunch of substances and not eat unhealthy, it can be possible, but do you have the self-control to want to be better so your kid could be healthy, so you could be healthy for your kid? And that is the ultimate question. So I, I will say, take your time before you have kids. Three, I would say, set up um, save a savings account for your child with the other parent while pregnant. Financially, um, make a stash for your kid. Because if you can't do it while you're pre pregnant and prepare, you're going to struggle way harder after that kid gets here. And you talking about, oh, we need to open a bank account. Why? Why we need to do this? Have those discussions before mm -hmm. you're, you're practicing what makes a kid because you're, get, you're going to get to see where a person's mind is at. If they're not prepping and you're the only one prepping, you're going to be the only one doing too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so that's the thing. And the fourth thing, to be fair, tuck in your pride and tuck in that ego. When you're raising kids, that, that should not exist. Mm -hmm. I want the best for my oldest. I want the best for my youngest. I'm a, before I make a decision, before I make a dentist appointment, I'm just like, hey, they could do a dentist appointment for this time. I have them both scheduled for this time. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Done. Mm -hmm months in advance because I value your time and I want you to value mine and it's about reciprocation all relationships are about reciprocation <laughs> right oh. and, and my fifth one is um to tell men that child support is not to leverage um visitation and you need to show up for your rights as a parent equally and that's, that's what I got to say about that child support. Mm -hmm. That's real. I, I agree. That's, that's good stuff. Uh, because the thing with kids is, like you say, they need time. They, they want your time. Um, and I'm learning that with these little ones, you know, with these little kids. I'm just like, oh, my God, they require Hogs, so much. Dog. Kids. Hogs. <laughs> For real, right? And, and sometimes, I mean, when you do have... Uh, you know, when you do have that help, when you do have the, the, the dad playing his part, the mom playing her part, um, it does make things a lot smoother opposed to you just having to do it all alone. Because I tell my wife, I'm like, look, 
we're going to make this work because mm-hmm. you're going to help me raise these kids. Right. <laughs> you know, but everybody's situation is different, but I do, I do agree with your points. Hmm. That's a lot of growth there. So you want to do your question? For sure. Would you date someone who doesn't pay child support? Um, um yeah, being being that, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a man and you know, I mean there are women who pay child support. Oh yeah, they are. Britney yeah, Spears. Are. Sorry. Uh, yeah, right. Holly Berry, and, um, sorry. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they they pay child support, but I couldn't. I'm me personally, I'm a, a high character value person, and that's because the way I, I carry myself. I'm not going to expect somebody to do something that I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. So I'm really big on morals and values and, and following through with what you said you was going to do and all those things. So if you're not doing that, then it's like, you know, even like I, I tell women, like if he's not paying child support, if he's not taking care of his kid, he definitely ain't going to help take care of you. Hello. And it's, it's, yeah. So I wouldn't personally. Yeah. Um, I don't date. <laughs> I don't, I don't know who this man is. I don't date because. I'm I'm not I'm not mentally ready. Um, I'm too close to the level of how close are you to the edge of fuck it? I'm very close. I'm tipped up with no edge. Um, because I'm not ready, and I think I will be doing a disservice to any man thinking they would want to court me or date me or wow me because I'm not impressed because I don't want to be impressed right now. Um, and I don't want my kids see me entertain multiple men. Um, I don't have people come to my house. I, um, I've never be, I've never been formally dated. Everyone that I've been in a relationship with has been like, we know each other, we friends. I graduate you to the next level, you know, or I dismiss you. And, um, I'm not ready. And, but if I was, I don't respect any, father who is not into fathering um I can't respect you as a man if you don't stand up in your manhood and your manhood is providing making sure and prioritizing and if your own child is not on that list sir I don't want to be on your list I don't want to be on your list if your child is not on that list and for me, I always say this, like there needs to be like a separate dating app for single fathers who also have children, because that is the thing, because I don't want to have more kids. And there's a whole bunch of men out here who's like, I ain't have no more kids. And so women who don't want to have kids and men who don't want to have kids that do have kids need to link. And that needs to be mm-hmm. the link up. And the reality is that's okay. And when you know for sure that you don't want something in your future now, don't entertain people who possibly might want to because you're doing them a disservice and you're wasting their time. And it's not saying that if they say, no, I don't want kids now, but you don't have kids, I'm not dealing with you either because I don't want to take away your possibility of possibly wanting that as a human being, period. So I think it's very important to know what you want, filter what you want and when it comes to men who are fathers if you're not 110 percent within your fatherhood then I don't want it because that's a that's a the most attractive thing for me for men is when I see them as fathers completely in it enjoying mm-hmm. it um they know their kid you know they have like a handshake they have talks you know Um, I got to get off the phone because such and such is here. Like, I love that because I wish my father was excited about me too. And if I experienced my father not being excited about being a father for whatever reason that was, I want my girls to have a relationship with their fathers where they're excited. And um, I can honestly say emotionally, both of them are. Um, but only one of them stands up in it and eventually the other one will stand up in it, but I have to give him time in that space because he is younger 
but at the same time, I'm not going to um, baby that because I know your ability is to stand up in it. And so it's very important to have those discussions and know where people's, people are at and tell them that you see their growth, you appreciate them. Even when dads do what they're supposed to do, tell them you appreciate it. You know, I know that you could have went straight home, but you made sure she had this. And, you know, I know it's last minute, but thank you for doing this. And it's all those little things that are not being said to parents who are co-parenting that be making like the smallest things be a big deal because people just want some appreciation. Did you see me? Did you notice the effort? Um, some acknowledgement. And that's all it, that's all it is. Yep. Okay. That's all it is. And I, I think child support can be avoided if two people are mature enough to avoid it because it is a huge outcome that doesn't benefit the kid. But in some instances, when one person is mature enough to separate themselves from a child and allow people to parent and the other one isn't, you know, yeah. got to get them boys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, this is good. This is good. And I, I don't want to discourage anybody from having kids. If you want kids, mm -hmm. you should have them for the right reasons, not for the money right. reasons. Mm -hmm. And um. If you're not ready, that's fine that you're not ready. And, uh, you know, they're not for everybody. They're not for they're everybody. Not. <laughs> <laughs> you're right about that. They're not for everybody. But, yeah, this is good. Um, I, just, I just want people to make some wiser choices, take their time, and uh, don't, don't give your future prizes away. I think that's what kids are, their future prizes. Because if you mm -hmm. invest in them the right way, you pour into them the right way, you will be rewarded later on in life. Because, listen, I will do anything for my mom mm -hmm. here in Georgia and she in Florida living in my brother's house. And my mm -hmm. brother knows thing, does not know things about my mom that I do. And um, I ain't going to say, but I'm going to say I know I'm the favorite. And, um, you know, I, I just, I just really value her and I understand her better now that I'm a mom. And I think mm -hmm. it's very important that we put our egos aside and stop looking at being parents as a money thing, because it's not a money thing. It's an yeah. investment thing. It's your future investment is way better than life insurance. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's good. But, um, thank you for doing this, Sean. I know you got um, many people. I got groceries and many people who are in my kitchen, probably tearing it up. Um, please check out It's Scary to Remarry because, listen, I know what it's like to break up with somebody and have to separate and, and, and decompress. So I don't know what it's like to remarry and get back in there, but I know it takes a lot of um, faith and belief in self and effort every day. And I commend anybody being in the same household also with little mini people. Like y'all, y'all got it. Cause woo wee, some days I don't even want to be in my house with myself, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank That's you for funny. listening, man. Thank you for listening to She Gets It Podcast. Um, Sean on here and Cozy Woo Mix. This will be on both podcasts. And um, I enjoyed it. This was good. We yes. got to do another one. For sure. Just let me know. I, I'll I'll always make time. I appreciate what you're doing. Thanks for inviting me on. Of course. Have a good night. Enjoy your weekend and your freedom. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.